going to be working on a little teddy bear face. Um, although this is a mix, we're very much on the poodly side. Um, super cute little kid. Coat dried up really, really nicely. <laughs> you can see at this point, we can't really see those eyes, uh, but they do like a fuller muzzle. Uh, so with this, I've already done the body. We've put a uh, four on the, oh really? We have put a four on the body, a scissored in leg. I started my clipper work up at the occiput. And now as we're looking at this little gaffer, uh, I tend to like to start by cleaning up my cheeks. For me, I find when you clean up the cheeks, it allows a good amount of airflow. So if you're having problems with ear infections, that sort of takes care of that. Also, when the ears come forward, you don't really see that you have a super tight cheek. So that's always pretty easy. Um, sorry, I just realized that's a little crooked. Uh, now, one of the key things that I love to start with is doing the diamond in between the eyes. Now, I always base this off pigment. So the thing is, is that you can see on this little, here bud, you can see on this little gaffer, he's pretty deadly nosed. So for me, I'm probably going to end up doing this on about a 15. Uh, these are Brav's. Um, uh, this is a five in one blade and I just find that that ends up being a little easier where we don't have to worry about potentially um, having any issues with reactive skin because of lack of pigment. So as my teenager t loves to say, we're going to cheeseburger this head. So I'm holding the bangs, like right, his visor out of the way with my pointer finger and then all I'm doing is <laughs> with my finger combing that hair out so that I can expose this um, diamond and then using the edge of the clippers since keeping it on that uh, uh, 15 we're gonna just use the edge and come in really gently right so you can see that I have done the top layer of the diamond and now we're going to do the bottom and honestly with that if he'll let me show you guys can you see the cowlick ends right there and that's what we're going to use because then not only do you get a really nice easy transition but you don't have to sort of muck about and we can grab that we can double check in here and what I want is to get right in here right so i want to take just this little piece out that's right there and hey bud oh he's a good boy oh he's so clever hey friend now i don't know if you can see Okay, so you can see we've cleaned up the corner of the eye. We have got our diamond and that right away, right? Like if we comb all this up, you can see that right away that really get, lets us see his handsome little eyes. And so it ends up being a big deal. It's interesting because uh, pet people, when they think they're, they're like doing the whole, I want to see my dog's eyes, they will scissor, they'll take the kitchen shears and they'll take this part off when really it's that diamond in the center. So now that we have that base work, what we are going to do is start, it's okay bud, um, I tend to start with my cheeks. So I'm going to uh, fold the ear out of my way so it's nice and safe. Um, the other thing that you can do depending on their ears, and I don't know if you can see, he actually has a little bit of issue right which obviously we would pluck out but another thing that i find is really helpful to any of that sort of situation pull that coat out of the way and then just really carefully just grab this the coat that's just on the peanut right there and that will also help with um ear flow and then plucking these ears i know bud he's like what the heck that was half my brain um it's okay bud i know there it's all gone Good happy ears now. Hey, should we do this one? So again, you can see all that coat. 
Obviously we never go at an edge, so we're just gonna come down, clear that out, and you can see once I get rid of that, and then we can just hand pluck those couple little hairs out and we've got a lovely clean ear. So we can fold, we can keep these folded out of our way. And then what we want to do is, and again, it's obviously personal preference, this teddy bear, there's no 100% right or wrong of doing anything. It's all personal preference, it's all client preference. I tend to come in just behind the corner of the eye and I put in my first line. Give it a little comb up to see anything that we might have missed. Right. And there you can see a really nice clean line. And again, when that ear is sitting where it's supposed to be, it doesn't stop any of the look. Uh, if you end up with clients that you're struggling with ear infections, I highly recommend just taking those te cheeks tighter. So again, right, I'm sticking behind the corner of the eye. Oh, he's a good boy. Can we turn just a little bit, bud? So that you can just see it from a different angle. Oh, good boy. Right. So again, if we were to look at that straight on, we've just roughed in those two lines. Sorry, <laughs> I shouldn't have had my scissors in my hand. Uh, we rough in those two lines. Now, at this point, for me, I tend to just find it easier that I will then do the top, and this is where I start going for my balance. So when you're thinking of a dog, always think crosshairs. So down the center, right? And then at eye line. And if you have those two points, you can end up with balance uh, to whatever style you're looking at. Um, whether it's a Bichon, a Portuguese water dog head, right where you're actually using those crosshairs to really find your center, uh, or on a little teddy bear head like this. So I tend to not pull it down hardcore, but just give it a light little brush down. Now, obviously we never want to go at an eye with our scissors. We want to go past it. Now, when I'm doing these, I tend to really love my ears out of the way. Again, just so they're not flicking it or anything like that. And you can see that I'm the tips of my scissors are well past this dog's eye. And then I'm just gonna round that corner. And what this does is by coming in round here, hang on bud, by coming in round right here, what it really helps us do is bring in a lot of light to this eye, right? And then we're gonna go through and do the other side. Now for me personally, again, cause it's all about safety, I tend to like to come this way so that the scissors are well away from the eye. And then once the edge of my scissors are past the eye, we can come in and set that visor. And again, it's all personal preference or client preference, whatever works for you. And then if we flip these back over, and then you can look down, you can see that we have a lovely U. And you can touch that up as need be or as per the dog's cowlicks because we all know if they can have a gob ton of cowlicks, they're going to be all right in here. So this starts to rough this in. Then I'm going to fluff that back up. And I don't know if you can see, uh, not really, the difference is probably about half an inch, maybe a little bit more. So as I come straight back i'm just going to start to blend in where i started clipping right because where we stop clipping we start scissoring and then we can really start to get the top of his head set now right now it looks a little chaotic so let's sort this out a little bit more 
Oh, he's a good boy. Hey, friend. Hang on, bud. You got one little... All right. So now we've set for the most part. We've roughed in. Hey, bud. The top of that head. What you then want to do is turn your dog to the side and make sure that you get this round. Now, depending on your dog, uh, you could do this as I'm doing with your curved scissors. You can do this with blenders. It's whatever makes you happy and feel most comfortable, right? And what you're wanting to do, uh, 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 but what you're wanting to do is just set that like a little just so it's lovely and round and soft and very teddy bear like right <laughs> oh you're a funny little gaffer did you did you just love that side eye that he just gave i have to say this little gaffer is super cute but not overly <laughs> impressed with the camera oh bless your little heart hey are you sitting here saying no paparazzi Hey, friend. Right, so now we have that set. God, I can see one hair that's out. Right, nice and round. Now we're going to go to his beard. Now, probably the easiest way to focus on this is to look at it directly on for just the heartbeat that we're going to start. Now, for me personally, I tend to like to comb this down. And that is so I can see my balance between, stop buddy, my balance here and my balance here. Now, again, they are, the owners are asking for his beard to be left a little fuller. Um, not necessarily what I think would be the cutest for this little gaffer, but it's not my dog and I don't live with it. So if they want a slightly fuller beard, then that's what we'll do. Uh, we are going to start by bringing in the half round right here, right? So we're going to go from the edge of his nose around and back up to the back of his eye and that's what we're looking at so again for safety we're going to hold that chin i've combed that down and then what we're going to do is set that round oh he's a good boy Right, pretty simple. We can comb this up just to see where our various lines are. So we've got a little bit of chaos right here. So we can just take care of that right now. Right. And so we have that. And then we're going to repeat and do the same on the other side. So again, a little brush down. And then... To get that rough shape in. And again, I, when I'm holding them, I put my thumb in front of their mouth so that there's no way they can get their tongue out. That's just for safety. And then all I'm going to do is make a soft C with my hand just to hold him up, not to put any kind of pressure, right? And then all I'm going to do is make sure that our underline matches from side to side. And it just, that's a way where you have control over their head, 
But as you can see, there's my thumb, there's my pointer finger. He's quite willingly holding his head in there. There's nothing holding him. Um, and that just allows us so that we can stare at this beard. I still have a little bit of a, um, well, we're probably fighting a cowlick there, aren't we? Now, I don't know if you can tell by the depth, but I'm actually behind. So I'm scissoring right here where my thumb is. And if you turn him, you can see where my thumb is, is well behind where his actual mouth is, right? So that's why I'm not worried about him potentially licking scissors, but anything that where I'm gonna be working in this section, then I really wanna make sure that he is protected in all capacities um, because dogs are living creatures and they, I, it, I have to say it makes me always very nervous when I see people scissoring um, and not getting their finger, uh, like protecting that by just doing that, something as simple as that little motion. Anyways, so we're gonna lift up that cheek coat. Again, I'm putting my thumb on the side that I'm working at, even though I'm up and over, it's just for the safety of the dog. And then what we're gonna do is just round that muzzle. And then using a smaller comb, I'm just, hang on, bud. Sorry, I didn't mean to put your own coat on you. Oh, you're a cute little man, aren't you? Right? And then we're going to come up and over, being really careful of those eyes. I swear to goodness, son, you are smelling my fingers like I just had something incredibly nummy, which I didn't, so. <laughs> oh, don't. So you can see here, and pretty quick, we have got that rough shape. Now I'm tipping his head up and basically um, trying to cover up his eyes with his coat so that I can see where I need to take that this level down to. Um, hang on, bud. I know, right? Oh, he's a good boy so that you can really see, like, right, the one side that I've cleared out and then the side that we have still yet to do. Oh, he's a good boy. I swear to goodness, buddy, you look like you're about to fall asleep. And you can see pretty quickly we have a roughed in head. Now, uh, depending on what you feel most comfortable doing, uh, you can either continue scissoring or you can uh, use your blenders. That's whatever is makes you the happiest. I just wanted to clean up a bit of that underline so he didn't look like he had a waddle going on <laughs> and then I don't know if you sorry of course that's when somebody's making a whole bunch of noise outside so he wants to look uh, what we're going to do is clean up the coat here and here but again we have to make really sure that he cannot potentially hurt himself so I'm going to comb that hair I've got my pointer finger and my thumb, so he can't do anything that way. Uh, uh For your safety, buddy, I know. But it's got to happen. And I, I get that done as quickly as I can. Again, we don't want to end up having issues because we were mucking about, okay? And so now it honestly, um, this is depends on personal preference or client preference. Um, I like to see a little bit tighter here. So I'm just using my blenders. I'm going to soften that. 
because again, they want this illusion of a fuller beard, um, which honestly is just a grow out because this little gaffer, when he came in last time, uh, we had to do a wet shave and reset him, which happens. Uh, they're now on a great every six week schedule. So he is just loving his new style. Uh, but that's definitely where we're just sort of, even though I'm tidying this up, we are doing it with blenders to give the illusion of tidy, but not losing length. So you can see that that muzzle is done. I would like a little, what if we got something right there? Hey bud. And then I want to say we have a little peak up here that I don't like. Right. And now his head is set for what the owners requested. Now the other request that they had is they wanted a more toy or teddy bear like ear. So we're going to do that. <laughs> it's funny, you can tell that we were dealing with mats and things before. So we're gonna start by sorting out this ear. Um, I tend to always find the edge of the leather with my uh, pointer finger and my thumb and then setting the ear uh, as we go. So I'm going to try that length. Hey bud. We're doing is just roughing in a length to sort of see what will look the best. So what we want to do is look at it hey, but from this way. And if his ear leather, okay, so the end of his ear leather, oh my goodness, buddy, is right there. So I'm thinking we can probably, no, I actually kind of like that length right there. He is holding his head a little bit uh, sideways, but I think ultimately that is the length that we're going to go for if they want a really round uh, ear that is giving teddy bear vibes. And when I say teddy bear, I mean, yes, the trim, but also the stuffy, right? Like they want him to look like he came out of the gunned uh, store. <laughs> okay, so then we're gonna look at him from the side. It's funny, a good friend uh, and I were literally just having a conversation not that long ago where he was saying that he prefers to do a straight across and he finds that the curve will happen nat naturally. So I have to say that every time now that I put any kind of curve on an ear, I'm always thinking about him. So you can see how we've really cleaned that up here. Then what we can do is turn him a little, oops, sorry bud, turn him a little bit sideways so that you can see where that ear naturally is. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of a fluff. And yet you're gonna have some flyaways, don't worry about it. And then all I end up doing, hey bud, Right, to round that out. And then just give it another comb. And anything, <laughs> you can tell that it is very staticky here today. Now, a lot of people might say, oh, well, you could use like an Artero anti uh, static or any of those. I totally could. Here's the thing. I have a real, um, this is a companion. It's going home to live his regular little doggy self life. So for me to put a ton of product in the coat that potentially could attract dirt or debris um, is not helping my pet people at all. So I don't tend to add things to clean coat unless I have to. 
Um, if I was really fighting static, which this I don't consider fighting static, if I was really fighting static, then I would take something like this. Um, I just don't react to, to this. And I don't know if you can see it. It gives a really light spray. And that one spray is enough, as you can see, to tame anything. So I can give that, again, another light comb. Here, bud. I have to say this little gaffer makes me giggle. He's a bit of a snoopy magoopy and every time somebody walks by the window at the salon, he's like, is it for me? So right now you have a lovely round ear. So we are going to do the same to the other.